I do know. What am I saying? I know what I have to do and what I should do differently because uh, the last time it was just kind of a mess. It, it came out okay and actually I ate most of it. Um, but I want to have more exact measurements so that way I can replicate easier. So we're going to start out with... Water, I, I put the order down because the person had the, it in their video. So I'm going to do water, which I just warmed up. Ooh, that water's hot. Ooh, okay. That was too hot then. I got to let it sit for a minute. Of course, I get it right and I'm going to do that. I need sugar and yeast mix. So I'm using this stuff and it's Red Star. So hold the red star brightly high in hand. I didn't realize it was, uh, didn't realize it was named that. Not that it really matters, but I just thought that was funny. So it's about one of these packets. Most recipes ask for about that much. So give or take, it's like that's brownish color. It's interesting, I've not used that before, so. Um, I don't know, I don't think I need this scale because I'm just gonna do it by. That water is boiling hot, jeez. What, what did I, of course I always, let me take out half of this water. I'm used to warming up twice the amount of water, so I put the same amount for half. So of course it just putting in room temperature water about half and half should change that temperature back. I don't need it to be boiling hot. I don't need it to be really hot actually. I just need it to be just around my skin temperature, maybe a bit warmer. So this is right around 100 degrees. That's like the tip top of what it should be. So I got my yeast in here. I got my sugar, which is what I was about to measure. three tablespoons of sugar. So this is one, one, two, three, three tablespoons of sugar. And then the water. So is the water good? I think the water is good now. So I'm gonna go just to um, the funny thing is when you add the water to the yeast you instantly start getting that pleasant odor so I'm just stirring it up a bit trying to dissolve the sugar as much as I can grams of flour to my 240 grams of water. I want to make sure I don't have a wet sloppy mess. I want to have uh, a dough, you know, the consistency to be proper uh, dough consistently consistency and not like a a blob of um, wet goo on my hands because all that's that's what happened last time a big blob of wet goo and then I just had to keep compensating with flour until it hit a proper consistency and I don't have any measurement for that other than just eyeballing it and that's I've never had consistent luck when I've did that. I got lucky the last time. I don't want to have to get lucky every single time. It's just a, it's a waste of my time. 
wow hold on here look at this let's see if that goes in focus it started to float it started to come up so that means the yeast is becoming more active right I believe so so I'm gonna add my flour my egg and my butter I melted butter I melted it this time because the last time I just put it in whole and then squished it with my fingers uh -uh. that's a waste I don't know if the butter consistently mixed through so we don't want that so I add my butter add my flour add my egg you add the flour to this and it already starts to smell like bread that's that's nice I this instant I've like this is only the second time I've used instant yeast to make bread and I made it those scallion buns too I made the scallion buns and I found that it's the instant yeast is very forgiving so hopefully I won't need any more flour than what I already put in so I think I'm in good shape so let me mix this this sucker up it smells like the bread already and the consistency feels way better just got to make sure to get this egg mixed in make sure this egg gets mixed in properly and I think we're off to the races here because then it's just a matter of letting it rise the first rise you want to do I think it's two rises but the second rise is after you make um your uh, what do you call it after you put it all together and it's rising in the pan itself oh yeah the consistency is way better already I may need to add a little bit more flour but I don't I'm gonna work it for a minute and see how it goes because a lot of people I only worked it for a few minutes only because I was frustrated and I thought I was in I screwed up so I don't want to invest too much time but uh, I, th I think I'm gonna add one more but you know what I'm gonna do about 50 more grams of flour initially and I think that'll do it so that's so 420 plus 50 So this is going to be 470 grams of flour to 240 grams of water. Although the recipe, the initial recipe I saw asks for um, milk. I think whole milk would definitely help with the flavor. I think it would make it a little more rich. But I think we're fine as far as this goes. My plan, make this. Oh yeah, that fixed it. Actually, probably a little bit less flour. Probably, probably do like three grams of flour. So any any flour that doesn't get absorbed into this, I'm just gonna chunk. But I won't have an exact measurement. So let's go ahead and call it um, uh, four four fifty five four hundred fifty five grams of flour to two hundred and forty grams of water or milk. Nobody's ever going to watch this, but I need to make notes of this. So that way, when I do it again, I, won't have, I don't have to be guessing. Because I have my sourdough recipe down. I even have it memorized, but I do have it written down somewhere. I have it written down on my notes on my phone. Right. So. Oh, that's. Yep, that did it. There's a bunch of extra flour on the bottom. If it gets incorporated, it probably won't. That's not a, I'm not the end of the world. The, the dough feels properly mixed, or properly, uh, the consistency is proper, I should say. So what I'm gonna do, 
a lot of people like to put it in like a, a cylinder. I just don't have one. I have a greased bowl, the one that I use for my sourdough. So that way you have like a, a more dramatic rise and it looks prettier in the thing. This is just gonna grow. But this sucker, look at that. So I'm gonna turn it inside out to make sure all that dough gets incorporated. Now it's sticky. So now I can put it at the bottom again and flip it. flour so maybe that flour is right so that would be 470 grams of flour to 240 grams of water it's a good consistency all the way around it's not the middle was still kind of sticky so it's good to just really squeeze that middle and make sure there's no sticky parts make sure there's no pack pods little picks of them not picks little pods of flour distributed throughout. You want everything evenly mixed. Um, it's, it's not too, it's actually rather, the weather's really nice, nice outside. It's like 60, it's 63, bluebird skies, pretty day. It's a little bit cool inside the house, so. I may put it in the oven with the light on to get it warm so it'll rise and it won't take like a day to rise. If I put it in there with the light on, let me just turn the light on now. Put it in there with the light on, it should only take about 30 minutes to rise. I left it on the counter the last time and it was, um, it's probably like 70 in the room and it took about 90 minutes to rise. Not a, not the end of the world. Actually, it's okay if he, if it takes a little while for it to rise. But if you're in a hurry or you need just want to get it done or something, you can speed the process along. It doesn't hurt anything. As long as it's like around 80 degrees, you don't want to like put it any higher at this point. You will put it really high when you cook, when you bake it, but that process, that's not yet. Not yet, right? space already put all my ingredients in so let's pop let's pop this down on the counter and shape it put it in our bowl it feels weird it feels like you're cheating I'm so used to sourdough just being like this not an arduous process but it's definitely a process right so Feels good. Let's go 
to rip a little bit. It's not going to look great. But it's not a problem yet. You don't have to worry about it. Building some tension in there. Should be... Should be okay. Feels good. Feels right. So... Just building that tension up. Gonna make a nice ball. There you go. Nice ball. Put it in my bowl. Cover it up. Gonna let it sit in the oven with the light on so it sits around 80 degrees. You're gonna hop in there too. We're gonna take we're going to watch it as it goes. Shouldn't take more than about 45 minutes or so to double in size. And when that happens, we'll cut back in. All right, part two. This is going to be garlic bread. So I'm going to take one half cup of butter. I'm letting it sit on the counter for a little bit. But I'm just going to go ahead and microwave it for about 15 seconds just to get that last little bit of warmth out. It's really simple, the garlic recipe. That's why I like this one. Half a cup of butter, one and one half tablespoons of garlic, which I have this guy right here. I use that. I mean, fresh garlic is nice too. If I could make my own garlic, I'll garlic butter. I'll probably work on doing that and then I'll have garlic butter. All right. You can put scallions in it if you want. In this case, I'm just going to do straight garlic butter and then a teaspoon of sugar. That's to aid with flavor, so. See, it's not melted, but now it's like counter soft, like if you've left it out for an hour or two. I'd only had it sitting on the counter for like 20 minutes. Mm, definitely not enough time. It's not cooking if I don't just dirty everything up. Got my butter, got one and one half, one and one half tablespoons. So that's one tablespoon. My hands are still greasy. Okay, that should be enough. Let me put a little bit more because we like garlic around here, thankfully. Since the, um, I don't want to dirty up too many bowls, so I just rinse this bowl out. I love these, these metal bowls are just perfect. So, let me mush this down. Even though this bowl is gigantic for what I want to use it for, what I'm using it for, I should say. It's going to mix this around a little bit, make sure the sugar is dissolving. Make sure the garlic is evenly distributed. My the bread has been in there for oh, 
let's take a picture. For about 10 minutes, it's probably, it's, it's gonna need a little while, but this actually smells really nice. Just garlic, garlic and butter. Garlic, I mean, really you'd wanna roast. One thing I'll, I'll probably end up doing is getting a whole garlic clove, wrap it in aluminum foil, put it on the grill for about a half hour at about 450 and just blacken it, just get it nice and gooey and soft, and that's the type of, just a whole head of garlic, probably about the size of uh, two inches in diameter or so. I need to do that, make some nice roasted garlic, it's delicious, and you can put it on bread just like that too. Anyway, this is ready, I'm gonna put this aside, and we're gonna, now we're gonna really wait, we have to wait for our bread to proof. It's been just over a half hour, I've had it in the oven, I you can I've had it in the oven right there. The light, you can see that the light is on, I think. And I'm checking it, and that thing is big. It's almost doubled in size. I'm giving it another, uh, I was going to say 20 minutes. Actually, 20 minutes was probably about five minutes ago, so I'll probably give it another five minutes or so. And I think everything's right. Everything's the way it should with instant. Instant yeast is a, is a different beast to deal with, but it's so much easier. So in theory, I can go from raw ingredients to having a loaf of bread in about 90 minutes, two hours maybe. That's great. Um, in this case, I have my inclusion ready, garlic and uh, gar my garlic butter. And uh, in a minute, I'm gonna take this out. We'll take a look at how much it's uh, grown. I have the time-lapse on it too. I wonder how the time-lapse came out. I have been opening it and then the light turns off, so there may be like points where it's like flashing, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, give it a few more minutes and we'll take a look. The sucker grew. Instant yeast I've found so far in my limited, limited experience has been very forgiving. Look how big it is now. Look at that. Look at that. It's almost doubled in size. It actually, eh, no, I, it's doubled in size. My goodness, that's exciting. Okay. So this is instant yeast with all white flour. Actually, I probably should have put some. The next time I do this, I'll just do wheat. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So this is the part where, like if you're like a good YouTuber, you're supposed to say, subscribe to watch, I don't care. I mean, you can, but I don't care. Um, make sure the surface is clean and dry. Look at that. Wow. I'm proud of that just by itself. This is a greased bowl. So, let gravity do the work. Alright. Two dirty bowls. Not a big deal. It's just airy, airy, airy. It's great, wow. All right, so I think I did it right this time. Boy, it feels like it's just, I filled it with air, that is crazy. All right, let's flatten this sucker out a little bit more. I need my bench scrape this sucker. This is like, this is like proto garlic butter. So if you have a better garlic butter recipe or whatever, that would be something I wouldn't mind if you left in the comments. If somebody watches this and goes, oh no, you can do the garlic butter way better if you do blah, blah, blah. I'm all ears. Not gonna lie, it smells good. Although I would probably be better. I mean, I would, you know, I'm not gonna lie about any of this stuff. But if I were to lie, I would say, oh, it's great when I mean, it's terrible. But I'll always say when it's not good.
because content's content, right? Okay, it's it's down. Let's go ahead and roll this sucker up. Ooh, it's it's the consistency's 100% different, and also the consistency is a absolutely different when, uh, when you have this contents in it. This inclusion changes the viscosity, or not the viscosity, the texture, but not a, not crazy, not terrible. Size it up just right. Size it so it's the size of the pan, more or less, so that I'm going to make my cuts quick and deliberate. These are, these slices are probably a little too big. I should do them at like a quarter of an inch, but we'll see. All right, so then just start reassembling in the pan. And we're gonna squeeze them all together and make sure they're even across the top so we don't have like a, a hump. It's fine that it's kind of gooey and everywhere because if the insides are all like gooey and crazy, I'm not going to be worried about it as long as the flavor is right. It does not seem like we're going to do anything really. It's, it's going to work well, but I thought that the last time. And like I was saying earlier, I'm my incredibly limited experience with instant yeast like this is very forgiving. I could be absolutely wrong and this could be a, a train wreck. But if that's the case, I've only spent about an hour and a half doing this whole thing. So, so now I'm gonna let this sit, let this rest for about a half hour. I need to look at my notes. I think it was four, yeah, it was four, because I want it 420 degrees, I'm preheating my oven now. So basically what I'm doing is letting this rest until my oven is completely preheated, which should take about 20 or so minutes. So once this goes off to tell me, hey, it's warmed up to the temperature, we'll throw it in there. But before that, so this is gonna take like 20, 25 minutes to get heated up. I'm gonna egg wash it just before I put it in, and it smells good just like this. I can, you can't, you can't smell it obviously, but like I said, it, I'm only the second time making bread with instant yeast. It's, but I think it's really forgiving. We're gonna find out. Let this rest. Let the oven warm up, and then we'll get to our egg wash and chunk it in. You know, I can blame it on the equipment, but that's just a uh, user error. I forgot to turn the mic, I uh, got to get the mic synced. So you see the mic is on, you can see the little red dot, but that's the wrong recording mode. It's, that's like local recording. Actually, I wonder if I pull the audio off of that, will it work? It doesn't matter. What I'm doing here, making an egg wash. So just take a whole egg, beat it up, um, and we'll just wipe it on the top. So this isn't... Uh, this is just to make give that nice shiny uh, top on it. So I think it already, and, and in this case, I'm pointing out that it actually rose a little bit more while it's sitting there, which uh, ended up being like an issue later on, but not a major issue, but an issue nonetheless. So washing with egg, just straight up, just put the egg right on top. Don't really need to worry too much about it. Then um, we'll put it in the oven. So wash, wash, wash. I'm just blah, blah, blahing about how I'm washing it now. That's why I don't like doing voice, voiceovers because I, I never match it properly. It never feels, you never, you never match the energy that you had at that moment. But it is working. And it, uh, what I should have done though, 
in hindsight, I have bigger uh, pans for uh, loaves. The next time, I will use the larger pan. I don't care if it doesn't fill it all the way up. It'll make less of a mess, and it'll be... Uh, just have more room. So, oven is up at three, uh, 350. Then I, um, I'm just going to pop it in. Uh, and I'm, I only baked it for about 26 minutes. If I do an inclusion like this, I'm going to do bare minimum 30 minutes. So setting a timer for 20 minutes and then, well, this is just me going to set a timer for 20 minutes and then we'll check on it. Sometimes when I start this thing, I forget that the audio needs to record right. So I think we're done. Let me take a quick look. This sucker, this sucker blew up. It's a, a magnificent. Let's take a look. Ooh, okay. Oh, I got, oh. Uh, we made a mess. That's fine. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right. Look at that. Look how much it grew. A lot of smoke. It's just the nature of the game. But boy, it smells good. So oh, actually, I'm gonna let it sit in there because it's a mess in there. Um, I'm gonna let it rest for about 20 minutes and then I'll take it out. But yeah, this is all, um, uh, I'm just excited. But yeah, it looks good, smells really good, and uh, yeah, instant yeast. Uh, so, let it rest. Say unbox, <laughs> but obviously that's wrong. This is, might make a little bit of a mess. So I'm, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it over the sink, because there's a bunch of stuff. to rest. This bread is not coming out. Okay, there it goes. Ooh. I greased it, and I'm, you can see I missed a spot right there. No problem. So from because of the moisture in it, I think it doesn't feel like it's cooked all the way through, but it is. Like the center is 170 degrees. So it's just a matter of um, time, letting it rest and letting it like, um, what do you call it? Sweat it out, basically. Oh, it's just falling apart. I mean, if it's not done, that's, that's done. Oh, it's done. It's done, the crumb is, Crumb is really pretty. The one mistake I made 
is um I should have put a, a I should have put it under a baking sheet so it didn't make a mess on the bottom. I gotta clean the oven anyway. It doesn't take that long. I just put the easy off and put the the saran wrap on it and let it sit for an hour and then it just wipes right off. So anyway. It looks like a mess now. I and mean, that's why I took a picture of it before I took it out of the pan, because it just fell apart. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to fall apart. This is pull apart bread. So you just take little pieces and eat them. This is I think that's right. It smells right. So I'm just going to let it rest like this for about 30, 45 minutes or so. It shouldn't. Normally, it takes a lot longer to cool because it's like a ball. Obviously, it's not. So just let it rest for about, um, yeah, 45 minutes. 45 minutes to an hour, and it should be perfect. So there we go. I'm going to eat this one.